Philippians chapter 3, I'm going to cut in at the, the end of it here. In verse uh, 17, Philippians 3, in uh, verse number 17, the apostle Paul writing, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so, as you have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working, whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. I'd like to bring a message to you this morning titled, Earth-based, but heaven-bound. Earth-based, but heaven-bound. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Well, Father, we pray that you bless your word now and help us to realize our position in Christ and uh, what we're supposed to do while we're down here. And we're looking for the Lord Jesus Christ to come back. And we pray that if at all possible, we might come back today. If not, help us Lord, to be faithful to thee until you do come back. May I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, verses 19 and, and 20 contrast two different uh, groups of saints. Uh, there's a, there's a, there's some people say this is lost people, but I think he's talking about saved people whose end is destruction. That's not necessarily hell. It's the destruction of this body, like the guy over there in First Corinthians chapter five that was messing around with his dad's wife. Uh, the destruction of the flesh because that's what he's talking about here they're they're fleshly minded uh there's their god is their belly there's a lot of saved people like that whose glory is in their shame and who mind earthly things and then he said for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the savior the lord jesus christ uh, they mind earthly things and and our conversation is supposed to be in heaven that's one of the greatest challenges for a child of god for a saved person is to is to be heavenly minded. Paul warned about that or encouraged about that over in Colossians chapter three. He said, "If ye then be risen, if, <clears throat> if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are uh, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God." When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, and the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. So it And there's a contrast there. We're to set our affection on things above and mortify the things our members down on this earth. And he lists those things. The problem is with the, with us is the the things down here seem so real or more real than than heaven and the things in in heaven. Uh, so that's what we follow. We have these five senses uh, down here that we. sense that everything's real i mean if you can if you can see it and hear it touch it taste it what's the other one here see pardon me feel it yeah well that'd be touch touch taste see hear smell yeah smell that's it it's it's real to us paul said over there in second corinthians 4 18 while we look not at the, the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So in reality, the things that you can't see are more real than the things that you can see. The things that you can't sense with your five senses are more real because they're eternal than the things that you can sense with your five senses because they're temporal. They're not going to last. Um, 
and it's difficult to keep that mindset when you're bombarded on every side to be conditioned to believe in what you see and hear, touch, taste, smell, and so forth and so on. It's more important to us. Um, it's like the brother said that he, he was talking to his pastor one time and uh, talking about witnessing the people and uh, like the the uh, the folks that's on the street maybe needing a meal or something and witness to them without feeding them. He said it's hard to uh, hear the gospel on an empty stomach. So this guy would buy him lunch and witness to him and let a whole lot of people Lord like that. But that that empty stomach is more real than heaven, than the sacrifice that Christ made. Um, and I know, I know you can take that too far with the second commandment ahead of the first, but uh, I'm just trying to show you the, the that for us, the, the reality is what we can't sense with our five senses. It's, it's difficult to keep that mindset. When the Lord was praying for the apostles over there in John 17, he, he didn't ask the Father to take take them out of the world but he said they're not of the world and that's the position we find ourselves in we're in the world but we're not of the world we we're a we're a different breed of cat so to speak that song says this world is not my home i'm just a passing through my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue we're uh <laughs> resident aliens <laughs> Not illegal aliens, but resident aliens. We're we're inhabiting a place that we really we're not. We don't belong. We're not citizens here. Our citizenship's in heaven, um, not down here. That's one of the reasons why the world don't like us. But in this passage of scripture, Paul gives us some guidelines to help us out that will help keep us heavenly minded, although we may be earthbound and we are until the lord comes back or until uh until we pass away all right first of all i'd like you to notice the uh example to follow he said there in verse 17 brethren be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example in other words you've got the apostle paul as an example and anybody else that's following him mark them that walk so that's following Paul and follow them, go by their example. Uh, Paul was extremely heavenly minded. Over there in the book of Acts, he got stoned by the Jews and was caught up to the third heaven, given over there in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And the Lord made him come back down in that body. And, and as soon as he was resurrected there, he went right back into Lystra where he was stoned by the Jews and it's almost like he was daring him to do it again so he could go back up there where he was to the third heaven he was heavenly minded um, we, we're to follow that example he said be followers of me over in Philippians chapter 4 verse 9 he said those things which you have both learned and received and heard and, and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, he said, Be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. He commended the saints at Thessalonica for following his example. In 1 Thessalonians 1, 6, he said, You became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. In 2 Thessalonians 3, 7, he said, For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. He, he proffered himself as a pattern, say, follow me. Do what I'm doing. This is the example. And we should do that. We should follow his example. Now, most of the so-called um, new Bibles change the word there uh, from example to imitate or imitation. Well, that's not a, a good change. An imitation can be a fake 
Um, to follow means to obey, to observe, to practice, to act in conformity to. It is our duty to follow the commands of Christ as an example. Uh, to imitate something is to counterfeit it. Uh, the devil imitates Jesus Christ. He counterfeits him. Uh, you don't want to be an imitation of Jesus Christ. You don't want to be a counterfeit. Uh, one of my friends sent me a news article. And I, I was going to tell you about this. But it's so fantastical. If I just tell you, you wouldn't believe me. So I'm going to read you this news article. I'm going to cite the, the, the article's name is, What is 3D Printed Meat? I'm reading this. I'm not making this up. Did you say that? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Who comes up with this? It's written by Brooke Beecher, B-E-C-H-E-R, August the 9th. 2023 made out of lab grown stem cells 3d printed meat is an edible rendering of a meat-like product created from an additive manufacturing process layer by layer i'm reading this i've got the news article cited and i still can't believe it layer by layer 3d printed meat is constructed or scaffold from a bio ink that extrudes out of a 3D printer nozzle. These protein packed prints replicate the look and mouthfeel of conventionally farmed butchered meat down to the cellular level to the point where they can be considered genuine meat by the Good Food Institute while being highly customizable and slaughter free. Aside from profit, establishing the novel technology behind 3D printed product, food production has everything to do with meeting a growing demand for meat alternatives, addressing food waste, and developing sustainable solutions to combat climate change. It's a solution for a problem that doesn't exist. There's no man-made global warming and Climate always changes. Like it's cold today, maybe warm tomorrow. But anyway, that's not part of the article. Three-dimensionally printed meat. It's hard for me to say that with a straight face. Is made from cultured meat. Cultured meat. Which means it is lab-grown, cell-based, or cultivated. While it's created from the fat and muscle cells of an animal, the process does not require slaughtering livestock. You can control the shape, structure, flavor profile, and nutritional value of a food by carefully integrating different ingredients into the 3D printing process. I've got a 2D printer at home and I don't trust that sucker. Man, it's let me down more times than I care to you get in a 3D printing food? Are you kidding me? The quote goes on. It has the same composition as a raw cut of meat. Rosalind Abbott, assistant professor of biomedical and material science engineering at Carnegie Mellon's College of Engineering, uh, told built in the, the article here. It has proteins to emulate the structure of the tissue and has fat cells known as adipocytes and skeletal muscle cells that provide flavor and texture respectively. Meat substitutes or plant-based plant -based alternative meats are also pioneering the 3D uh, printed meat space. These faux meat products are commonly created from filament mixtures that combine soy, pea protein, PEA protein, beetroot, chickpeas, coconut fat, and even algae proteins, depending on the brand. To begin the 3D printed meat process, scientists, scientists biopsy a batch sample of animal stem cells, depending on the desired type of meat, beef, pork, poultry, or even fish. These cells then undergo an in vitro proliferation process 
bathing in a nourishing nutrient dense serum within a climate controlled bioreactor. Over the course of several weeks, these cells multiply, interact, and differentiate into fat and muscle cells that make up bioink. This ain't science fiction, folks. This is real. Then a robotic arm uses a nozzle to dispense this paste-like cultured meat filament in fine layers atop one another. The arm follows the instructions of, instructions of an uploaded digital file using computer-aided design or CAD software in order to replicate the correct shape and structure of the intended meat. 3D printed meat material must be viscous yet firm enough to reproduce a structural model complete with accurate tissue vascularization depending on the type and cut of meat. You know, if you wanted a, a, a filet mignon, it's real tender. But if you couldn't afford that, you go down to a sirloin, it's a little bit tougher. They could replicate all that. Man, make me a sirloin. <laughs> it tastes like a filet mignon. The printed product returns to a second incubation phase, which allows stem cells to differentiate and mature as they would inside of an animal. I got an idea. Just use the animal. This is where muscle fibers fully form with the, the right density, thickness, and length now that it's been taking shape. After a few more weeks, the lab, the table meat, is ready to be cooked and served. Some 3D food printers skip this last step by incorporating lasers, which provide a heating element that cooks the food as it prints, similar to a cream brulee torch, the Scientific American reports. You got a laser in there, cook that fake meat for you. Traditional agricultural practices are the foundation of the world's food supply chain, but come at a great cost. As summarized by online science publication, Our World in Data, the resource intensive industry of the food production requires large amounts of fresh water, got plenty of it. Significant land use, got plenty of it. Went out driving uh, toward uh, Tennessee the other day, Madison County, Northeast Madison County. There's all kind of dirt out there that still hasn't been developed. Just laying fallow, nothing growing on it. I bet it's like that in a lot of places. More specifically, half of the world's habitable acreage is responsible for more than one quarter of greenhouse gas emissions. This is where cultured meat harvests and 3D printing tech can help. Currently, the majority of livestock are reared in concentrated animal feeding operations, causing environmental, public health, and food security concerns. Food security concerns? I'm concerned about the security food you're printing on a 3D printer. Um, Three-dimensionally printed meat will reduce agricultural land use, water consumption, greenhouse gas emissions, and improve ener energy efficiency. Purely plant-based, redefined meat products line offers a lean and smooth cut of its faux beef tenderloin. Taking note of color graduations and texture, this butchered meat alternative makes roast and filet mignon accessible for both meatless and carnivorous palates. The entirety of re redefined meats, 12 item portfolio is strictly vegan, meaning, or vegan, meaning that none of the 3D printed meat products are sourced from cultured meat or utilize any animal byproducts. Instead, the company's ingredient list of soy, pea proteins, chickpeas, beetroot, nutritional yeast, and coconut fat used to create their brand of new meat. <laughs> Folks, it's fake. It's fake meat. It's fake reality. We're almost being conditioned to believe that fake is real. And we have an example to follow. We have the Apostle Paul who's following Jesus Christ, the real thing. 
We have an example to follow, the real deal. We don't need an imitation replacement. Amen? Which the world will pawn off on you. Um, follow the example. When I first got saved, I had examples to follow. I, I would follow them and not even know why sometimes, and I even have a scripture for it sometimes. But follow a good example. The guy that led me to the Lord, I, I uh, followed him without knowing why sometimes. He'd pass out tracts and, and giving and, and things like that. I'd follow him. <laughs> um, Brother David Jared, uh, I've tried to emulate his example in, in uh, thoughtfulness. He's one of the most thoughtful people I've ever met. Just thinking of people's birthdays and thinking of uh, gifts to give and cards to send and stuff like that. that. That's a good example to follow. I, I tried to follow Dr. Upton's example of reading the Bible. He said, yeah, every Christian ought to read the Bible to once a year. No excuse for you not to read the Bible to once a year. Oh, okay. Pastor said read the Bible to once a year. Started reading the Bible through once a year. I actually try to read it through twice a year um, now, but uh, that's an example. Follow that. We have an example to follow in the Apostle Paul. And when I'm confronted with a situation sometimes that I may not know exactly what to do, I always ask myself, I wonder what Paul would do in a situation like this. You know, WWJD, uh, WWAPD. What would the Apostle Paul do? He said, be you followers of me as I am of Christ. We have an example to follow. Notice, secondly, uh, verses 18 and 19, we have people to avoid. He said, for we walk, uh, for many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Oh, yeah, I meant to tell you about that 3D printed meat. That's just another... Uh, means or avenue of control over you if you don't have a printer that can print 3d meat what are you going to eat you have to go to somebody that can print it out for you whereas you know, if you grow in your own you get some chickens or rabbits or something in your backyard to hutch and grow your own meat that's not part of the message but you know, I, i'm leery about stuff like that that technology they get you hooked on that stuff and dependent on that stuff fake meat 3D printed meat. Who would have thought we'd live to see the day? But anyway, here in uh, in verses 18 and 19, we got some people that we're to avoid. And like I said, I think these are saved people, but they're earthly minded. Now, you shouldn't get all holier than thou, an attitude like that, but there's some folks that you need to avoid because they will be detrimental to your spiritual growth and your spiritual well-being. Who are they? Well, it's those folks that mind earthly things. They're earthly. No, we're on this earth. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We're not of this earth. In Romans chapter 16, verse 17, Paul said, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not only for Jesus Christ but their own belly and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple there's some people to avoid Paul told those Corinthians he said be not deceived evil communications corrupt good manners in 1 Corinthians 9 or 5 verse 9 uh, 1 Corinthians 5 9 Paul said I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with the covetous or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must you needs go out of the world, but now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or idolater, or railer, or drunkard, or extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. Your close fellowship is not to be with folks that mess around with those kind of things. You're to avoid them. Amen. Amen. It will have an effect on you. And a good friend of mine asked me if I if I needed anything for him to pray about. And I said, yeah, I've got something to pray about. I said, uh, I've got a, some family. Well, my daughter and her family, if you pray for them, I want my grandkids to get saved. And I appreciate you praying for them. And other than that, I can't think of anything. 
And he said, all right. And he would pray for him. And, and then a few months later, he asked me how it was going. I'm about the same. He said, well, I'm praying. He said, I've got it concentrated down or whatever, condensed. He said, I'm praying for your family that the Lord would bring in some wise people into, into the life of your daughter and her family, uh, some wisdom. And he said, because the Bible says that he that walked with the wise men should be wise, but a companion of fools should be destroyed. And there was a lot of a lot of your life is going to be determined by who your friends are, who, can, who your companions are, who your associates are. You ought to associate with people that are better than you. You know, I try to do that and people disassociate from me because they're, <laughs> they don't want me to rub off on them, but I'm trying to get some of their goodness rubbed off on me. In Second Peter 2, 6, Peter said, in turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that should live ungodly, that after should live ungodly, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah is a real historical fact. It really took place. God destroyed them for a reason. And it was an example to those that should uh, live ungodly afterwards. That That's what God thinks about this stuff. But he said in verse 7, he delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul with the, from day to day with, teeth, with their unlawful deeds. Seeing and hearing that stuff, it affected um, There's just some folks you don't need to be around. There's a fable of two travelers that were on a road together, and a bear suddenly appeared on the, the scene. And uh, before he, before the bear saw him, one of the travelers uh, ran as fast as he could and climbed up a tree. And uh, the other one looked around, couldn't find him, and couldn't get up the tree in time, so he just laid down there in the road and played dead. And I say that's what you're supposed to do if a bear attacks you. Don't run. Play dead. I don't know if I can do that. But this, I don't know if it's a joke or a fable, but it, the, the way the story goes, the, the bear came up and sniffed all around this dude and he kept perfectly still and held his breath. You know, because they say a bear won't eat something that's dead and it's got to kill it itself. He said, when the coast was clear, the traveler in the tree came down and asked the other what it was that the bear had whispered to him when he put his hand to his ear. And the other replied, quote, he told me to never again travel with a friend who deserts you at the first sign of danger. <laughs> that's a fable. It's a story, but there's a truth in it. We've got an example of uh, who to follow. We've got uh, people to avoid, and last of all, I'd like to say this, verses 20 and 21, a purpose to achieve. He said, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working, whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Our objective as a believer should be to have our conversation in heaven while we're living down here our our life down here should reflect our conversation up there uh, when the lord gave the apostles a pattern of how to pray one of the elements of that was uh, pray that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and we're citizens of heaven our conversation down here should be reflected of what it's like in heaven. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Paul said, Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The world's goal is to get you conformed to it and conformed to its image. God's goal is to get you conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And we ought to be pressing toward that mark more and more each day. The world don't want you to rock the boat. The world don't want you to upset the apple cart. The world wants you to think like it thinks. God wants you to think like he thinks. Galatians chapter one, verse four, Paul said, 
talking about the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. God thought so much of this, the wickedness of, the, of this world, one of the reasons that Christ died was to deliver you from this present evil world, not have you conform to it. And he said, present evil world, so that would fit in any place, any time, any, any uh, time element. If it was that bad 2,000 years ago when he said this present evil world, you can imagine how bad it is now. Everything getting as better and better as, it, as we evolve toward them. No, we're not getting better and better. We're getting worse. Evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse. If it was evil back then, it's evil now. We have a, a heavenly purpose, our conversation. We have a heavenly person, the Lord Jesus Christ. We have a heavenly promise. He's going to change our vile bodies and fashion it like unto his glorious body. I believe that day is getting closer and closer. I know people have been saying that for years and years, but I'll tell you what, we're a day closer than we were yesterday, a year closer than we were last year. He's coming back. The Bible says over there in 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, now we're the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Now is not the time to cave in and to give up. Now is the time to redouble our efforts for the cause of Christ. We have an example to follow. We have people to avoid. We have a purpose to achieve. Let's press toward that mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let's see how much more like, like Jesus Christ we can become until he says, come up with it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we pray that you bless your word, uh, bless these verses, this message. Uh, although we're earthly bound, I pray, Father, that you'd help us to be heavenly minded. Uh, there's some that think that uh, you can be so heavenly minded there that they're no earthly good. I'm not sure that's a, even possible, Lord. Uh, you told us to set our affections on things above, not on things on the earth. The conversations in Christ. We're seated together with Christ in heavenly places. I pray that you'd help us to live like it, Lord, and, and show the world a, a heavenly conversation. Uh, again, bless your word. I pray for these prayer requests that were mentioned. You take care of the need in each one of them. Uh, dismiss us with your blessings, Lord. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's take a break.